recorded. Um, so that will be available on YouTube a little later. But with that, I'm going to turn things over to Bella and Adam. Okay, sorry about that. I am unmuted now. Um, thank you for joining us today um, for this presentation on environmental science resources that are available to you from the State Library and State Archives of Florida. Um, my colleague is Adam Watson. I'll let him go ahead and introduce himself. Hi, I'm, excuse me, I'm Adam Watson. I'm the uh, photographic archivist or <clears throat> manage the photographic collection of the State Archives and uh, curate that collection and um, also choose things that go up on the website <clears throat> on Florida Memory. And been here about 22 years now, worked in all different parts of the State Archives, but uh, in my favorite place now is the photo collection. Alrighty, and I am Isabella Fulmar. I'm a Florida Collection and Outreach Librarian for the State Library. And my duties include, um, aside from management of the Florida Collection, uh, reference services, and uh, delivery webinars such as this one. Today, we will begin by covering archival topics. Uh, we'll discuss some collecting areas within the State Archives of Florida, including photo, video, state agency records, and legislative records. And then we'll uh, proceed to my portion of the presentation, and I'll give you a tour of the Environmental Science Information Portal, uh, which is basically a uh, web page where we have aggregated a bunch of really useful environmental science resources for employees of DEP, the Water Management Districts, and FWC. I'll then touch on a few other resources available to you from Florida Special Collection and then uh, plug our desktop delivery services for you. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Adam. All right, I'll start out by talking about the State Archives of Florida and what we uh, collect and what we do basically. Um, we are the central repository for the archives of state government, so that means that we have um, legislative records, all records, uh, archival records, or what are records that are deemed archival that have historic value, um, eventually should come here from all state agencies, um, although state agencies can keep their own records if they're able to do that, um, and they often do, but the bulk of it would come to the state archives ultimately. Our legislature, rather, um, including all the signed laws of the state, um, all the committee records from all the various committees that work on a bill um, that eventually become law. Um, and that's a, a big part of what we do every day is help, uh, we help uh, uh, people in Florida, uh, legislators, attorneys do legislative research, um, pull those records um, and see what they what the committees might have been thinking about when they were coming up with that law. And I think those are some things that might be valuable to those in environmental science too. Um, you could come and see, you know, how that how that law or whatever it may be came to be. Um, so we do that every day. We also um, do a lot of genealogy or help people help uh, patrons with genealogical records. Um, but we also have a lot of environmental science uh, people from various agencies and from the public uh, doing research, doing documentaries, doing uh, writing books, doing papers, presentations, and that sort of thing. The basic and the biggest purpose for us, or the, our purpose, is to preserve and make available all of these public records that are in our custody. The archives was founded in 1969 um, officially. That doesn't mean we have we have records going you know back to the 16th century and and many more all the way through territorial period and and as Florida became a state. Um, so we have records much earlier than that. But as far as the legislative records go, we have that's probably the earliest that we have going back. Um, 
and so they're pretty scant as you get into the 70s, but much more now. And of course, we have digital records and all that from the legislature. <clears throat> we also have, uh, besides state government records, we have um, local government records uh, from various uh, counties and local agencies. Um, we also have private manuscript collections, and that would be donors from uh, just personal, you know, private donors. So Civil War letters. Um, uh, we have collections I was going to mention uh, from botanists and uh, scientists, other people that involved in the scientists, uh, involved in the sciences rather. Um, also, we have the Florida Photographic Collection, which I manage. And then a genealogical collection, which includes uh, microfilm from uh, local government um, and also uh, a lot of published material as well. Um, and then so we have things like census records and uh, deeds and things from uh, courthouses. Sometimes those are some of the records we have courthouses might may have burned and and we may have the only version of that so um we need a little technical difficulty here <laughs> there we go and uh, so anyway we get a lot of genealogists genealogists coming in every day too here are some i've just uh bell and i put together some things that might be of interest or some examples of records um, that are in the photographic collection which i'll talk a good bit about um, you can see there the uh, Mayaka River State Park, some aerial shots. Um, both of those are aerial shots. Um, what else? Forest, Florida Forest Service photographs. You see controlled burning. We have a lot of stuff going way back. Early photographs, you can see that's from around 1930 um, on the right, or both at, well, I don't know if the one on the left is, but uh, anyway that sort of thing. We have glass lantern slides. We have all kind, of, every type of uh, photographic format that you can think of going back to daguerreotypes. Uh, the er one of the earliest photographs we have is uh, Key West, which is kind of an aerial photograph from the 1840s, just looking over someone was, I don't know what building or where they were, but they were able to kind of get a, sh a daguerreotype shot of, the, of this town of Key West or the city of Key West. Um, and some of these, like these glass lantern sites, like this one, come from uh, the Department of Environmental Protection, who all, all the various agencies that um, came before that and then ended up being DEP, they had managed to keep and collect um, photographs going back to the teens and things that were used in presentations, kind of like these, this uh, photo of the Um, and then photos of swamplands and that sort of thing. So, um, and the, I, I'm guessing those were, these are glass lantern slides that would have been put into kind of the equivalent of what was a slide projector um, that could have been lit with a candle or some sort or a, um, a lamp of some sort. So, some other notable collections include uh, Department of Was, I mentioned DEP, Environmental, Collection, Environmental Protection. Uh, these are that series 2332 is Pinellas County aerial photographs and hurricane damage from 1926 and 19, uh, to 1995. Uh, the Sherman Fairchild aerial photographs, that's a collection of um, developed by Sherman Fairchild, who uh, was born in the 1890s. His father was uh, an early IBM person, and he developed one of the first aerial photo aerial cameras, and we have that collection um, of Florida photographs, of aerial photographs. So that's an interesting one. Of course, Florida Park Service maps, we have a whole collection of maps in the library and the state archives um, that would be of interest, I would think. The Florida Trustees of the Internal Improvement uh, uh, Fund there, geological surveys and that sort of thing. Um, Many, many more I have a list of things that might be of interest. Uh, we have film and video, and we won't play that. It's starting to play, but uh, it'll probably take up all of our bandwidth if we actually play it. But 
I'll show you some other things. As I mentioned before, we have legislative records, Senate and House records, which are searchable by bill number and the year or the chapter law number. A lot of times we'll get requests, um, they'll say, well, I have a statute and with the records are not organized that way, but you can look up the bill number and the year or the chapter law, which is basically the year and that, that chapter number. Um, we also have committee audio and digital records available from those, you know, when they were doing House floor debates or talking about that legislation. Um, I think I mentioned all this before. Um, another example is the Committee on Environmental Protection record. So there's, you can see some of the dates for those. Um, some other state agencies here that would be of interest. Um, and, uh, they're arranged by a record group, which would mean for us means, uh, and for you, <laughs> means that it, that would be the creator of a series of records. So um, Department of Natural Resources would be a certain record group, that would be record group 500. And within that, there would be a series of other uh, records that they, that overall, that agency produced and it could be different subjects within that. So you might have, um, say, the uh, Florida Department of Agriculture, and they're going to have various records relating to agriculture that they also have promotional things that they do and that kind of stuff. Like uh, there's a collection I'm dealing with now where we're getting all of their promotional materials and films and photographs that they used for various uh, things for related to agriculture in Florida. <clears throat> DEP, Department of Environmental Regulations, Water Management District rec records. We have photographs and, and paper records for those. Fish and Wildlife, we just got a huge um, collection from them that we're still processing. Um, and uh, the Canal Authority of the State of Florida, and Pollution Control, all those things, state lands, um, many, many things related to that. And we get, I will have to had patrons come in, researchers looking for images, certainly looking for for textual information and about these things, but also for images to illustrate something that they're uh, a paper, like I said, or in a book that they're doing. Um, uh, I know transportation did a book, and they use photos that we have of bridges for like historic bridges. Um, so even the, if the agency has its own kind of book or paper or some sort of presentation. I've had other uh, scientists, biologists come in looking for historic photos of fish from a certain period of time. So we have millions, not millions, we have thousands of photographs, it seems like millions of people in Florida catching fish, put, you know, trophy fish and that kind of thing, where you can see various species, you know, much larger or much more abundant than they were than they are now and so I, and I've seen many books and um, uh, and um, what am I thinking of um, documentaries being done on stuff like that also things about Florida you know dredging and that kind of thing so um, all righty. That's about that for me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Adam. Uh, just one moment. We'll all switch over to my slide. And... Okay. So I will begin with a quick overview of the, of the services that the State Library offers to state employees. Um, first of all, at both our main branch in the RA Gray Building in Tallahassee and also our uh, Capitol branch location, uh, we offer specialized research assistance in person, via phone, and uh, via email. We offer interlibrary loan services, meaning that if there's a book that you can't find in our collection, uh, we can get it from another library across the state for you. Um, and we also offer table of contents service, which I'll touch on in a bit more depth in, later in the presentation. We offer access to electronic databases 24-7, uh, so that's also available from home if you 
uh, need to check on something while you're away from the office or if you're traveling. Um, and we're not covering uh, newspaper databases in this particular presentation, but I thought I would also just plug the fact that through those electronic databases, such as US News Stream, you get access to current newspapers, including the Tallahassee Democrat and Tampa Bay Times. Um, a lot of our state employees find that very useful, especially if they're trying to keep up to date on events during session. Um, and we also, for materials that um, if you are located not in Tallahassee, uh, if you need to access a state publication, for example, we offer on-demand scanning of library documents with the caveat that that is contingent on uh, copyright laws. Um, we cannot entire copy an entire book for you if it is not a government publication uh, and also staff availability. So before I get into the electronic, um, sorry, the Environmental Science Information Portal. Uh, I just want to let you know that all of this is made possible with your state library card. So uh, if you don't already have one, um, please sign up for one through this form. Uh, you'll receive the slides and an email within a few business days, so you can access it there. Let your colleagues know. Um, it's a really fabulous uh, resource for accessing peer-reviewed journals through Science Direct and other um, science databases like I'm about to show you. All right, so let's go ahead and begin our tutorial of the environmental science. Patients will switch gears to the browser. Okay. All right, so I have the environmental science information portal pulled up. Um, I had the URL for that included on the previous slide, but it's also accessible through the State Library catalog. Here's our catalog um, if you want to just search for a publication directly. And if you were trying to access it through the catalog, you would just go to this left um, subject guides tab. And we've compiled a few of these. Um, and what they are, just basically little quick guides um, that you can bookmark um, just for ease of access to get to these uh, environmental science resources that you routinely need to get to throughout the course of your workday. State library card, um, as well as uh, for accessing the desktop delivery services that I mentioned. Um, we also have a few environmental science related guides here, um, bibliographies, so I'm going to open up a couple of them. Just to give you a quick look, we update these regularly and they're really just kind of reading lists um, with professional resources relating to environmental science um, or in this case forestry in Florida. Uh, and we just as new publications are released through University Press of Florida or other academic publishers. Um, so I'll kind of skip over the getting started tab. Um, I think we've covered most of the key material from that side. At the bottom, you'll see our featured resource. Uh, this is something that we refresh uh, periodically. Right now we're featuring Florida Wildlife, which is a really great historical publication of the FWC. Here they are. We have them uh, uploaded to our archive.org page. I'm showing these to you in case if you have if we have any marketing staff in the in the crowd for environmental agencies. Um, these are really fun for social media posts or um, inclusion in your newsletters, whatever, what have you. Um, but they are also just a really great source of information um, on environmental science topics um, and particularly historically speaking. Here we have a feature on the Chipola River, for example. Um, and because these are uploaded on our archive.org page, we have them downloadable in a variety of formats, including um, Kindle format if you want to load it onto your e-reader, EPUB if you uh, have a not an Amazon uh, reader. So that's just one fun little resource um, that we have tacked onto the portal. Now on to the key. Environmental science resources, we have here linked a number of databases that will be really useful for you. We did a little bit of outreach with uh, the environmental agencies a few years ago, so you might have you might have seen some reviews of ProQuest Biological Science or Agriculture and Environmental Science. 
what is new to you is Science Direct. We got that uh, right around March of 2020, and so I'm pleased to give you a quick little tutorial of that. And Science Direct um, is one of the most comprehensive uh, databases for the sciences in existence. It includes about 16 million uh, articles from over, I want to say over 2,500 or maybe over 3,000 peer reviewed journals, um, as well as a number of ebooks are available through this platform. Um, so you can run a general keyword search if you're looking for material on a specific topic. Um, for example, if you're working for the water management districts and you're looking for information about water quality in Florida, um, you know, or about the health of the, the aquifer. Uh, we can scroll down here. If you want to just search generally by subject, you'll see um, that you can search publications uh, by subgenre within uh, the sciences. If we hit Earth and Planetary Sciences, we'll see that we have over a thousand publications just within this subdomain. Um, if I wanted to narrow that down to journals as opposed to textbooks or books or handbooks, it narrows it down to uh, 218. And we have um, a lot of relevant topics um, for, for Florida scientists, including climate risk management, climate services. Um, if we scroll down a bit more, we see some journals that would also be pretty relevant to Florida's Florida-based environmental scientists, such as estuarine and coastal marine science, or estuarine, uh, coastal, and shelt. A keyword search. I'm sure that you are familiar with how to use a scientific database, but let's just say Florida water quality is something that you're interested in searching for information on. Oops. Having a little bit of internet lag here. Okay, so we have over 54,000 results on Florida water quality. Obviously, that's an overwhelming source uh, or amount of information. If we wanted to select only material from 2021, we have nearly 3,000 results. Um, but we have uh, these other limiters off to the side here to kind of narrow the scope of what we're searching for. Um, as I'm sure you're familiar with from these other databases, uh, you can able to hear. Let's try review articles, or actually, let's try research articles. That brings us over 2,000 results. Um, you can also narrow by publication here. Um, you have journals relating to environmental pollution, hydrology, um, ecotoxicology, and much more. Um, as you can see, you can download a PDF uh, uh, if you need the full text of that material. In some cases, you'll get only the citation. Um, Science Direct is pretty good about having the full text of many, many of the articles, but if you do run across something that you're interested in that is really just a citation, um, I can show you how to request that through our article delivery form. If you go back to the environmental science uh, information portal. You can select request an article, fill it out with um, as complete information and information about the author, the journal title, et cetera, et cetera. And then once you hit submit your request, it'll go to our interlibrary loan specialist who will obtain that for you as soon as possible. Okay. So one moment while I return to uh, Science Direct here. Let's select um, this particular article about the Florida Manatee. Um, again, you get the abstract, you get the opportunity to download the full text of the article. You can skip around to the section that you need um, using this table of contents off to the side here. And let me return to the database, just one moment. 
let's say I only wanted to select material from the Journal of Estuarine, Coastal, and Shelf Science. We have some uh, articles here relating to Florida water quality from that journal, uh, relating to altered hydrology in Tampa Bay. So the functionality, especially of the ProQuest databases, biological science and agriculture and environmental science are pretty much the same. You do have the ability to set up current alerts. Um, we have also included here a number of federal government information sources from USGS um, and the US Forest Service. So that is just conveniently located in one place if you were to bookmark this environmental science information portal. If uh, you were to select government reports and statistics, you see that it pulls up in our catalog um, from both our state publications collection and our federal documents collection. Okay. And so far, I think this is a pretty good quick overview of the environmental science information portal. What I'll do next is return to the slides. So just bear with me for a second while I return to those. Okay. So following that overview of our environmental science information portal, I'll just touch on some material from the Florida collection that we have to offer you. Um, one one uh, request that I get semi-frequently from environmental agencies, um, particularly um, geologists, is concerning um, water pollution and tracking down the historical sources of water pollution in a community. So I have here a scan um, from a Quincy City directory indicating the address of a historical dry cleaner. Um, those are pretty notorious. It's like um, mechanics and things of that nature. We have actually at the State Library one of the most complete uh, existing collections of city directories providing coverage of Florida cities. Um, so you can either come and visit us in person to take a look at those, or you can place a request with us via email. Oh, one moment, I'm experiencing a technical difficulty. Just one moment, thank you for your patience while I iron out this technical difficulty. and relating to aerial photographs in the meantime. At what scale and what time frames is there a complete set of aerial photographs available for the complete coastline of the state? Um, our, I would say that our um, collection of, this is Adam again, is um, it's, it's not a complete or comprehensive, I, definitely not. Uh, the best uh, I would recommend the University of Florida has probably the most complete um, collection of um, aerial photographs that go back to I think around 1930. Um, they have a better collection than we do. We have some good and interesting things, um, but I would say theirs is more comprehensive than ours. Um, and what was the other part of the question? I'm not sure what the size, I mean I know you can download those from UF online and you can also download ours online. Um, the resolution is not extremely high on, if that was part of the question um, on ours and I'm not sure about UFs. But, uh, yeah, it was the uh, scale and time frame. Yeah, I mean we can do higher resolution scans uh, of all the ones that we have um, but uh, because of the size, you know, storing large size files online for our Florida memory website. 
we're just not able to do that yet as, as time goes on. I'm sure we, we want to put as much up there as high resolution as we can. Okay. Thank you for your patience with that technical difficulty. Um, regarding that slide um, with the city directory information, here is that um, example scan uh, from the city directory indicating the location of a local dry cleaner. Um, another useful source of information is our collection of ephemera, um, particularly covering Florida State Parks um, historically. These are great. Um, they, they include information of, you know, organizational information about the park typically, um, but they're also useful for any presentations you may have. We personally have them highly requested for exhibits, museum exhibits and things of that nature. Um, in terms of material that is available for checkout, we have all kinds of environmental, environmental publications. We're constantly scouring academic publishers to get um, new releases um, as they are hot off the press. So you can access these through our catalog and place a hold with your state library card or give us a call. Um, and we, if you're local to Tallahassee, you can pick it up in person, or if you're anywhere statewide, we can have it sent directly to your, uh, your desk. I'm gonna quickly plug our table of content service. This is a really great way to stay up to date on um, developments within your profession. Um, we have a number of periodicals connected to your discipline. Um, for example, within the field of science and technology, we subscribe to Aquatics, Florida Scientist, um, Science News, Shore and Beach, and Scientific American. The way this works is you sign up and you select all the titles you're interested in receiving updates on. There is no upper limit to the number that you can request, and we will uh, email you a scan of the table of contents every time we get a new issue in, new issue in to which you can respond with the articles you're interested in receiving. Um, again, due to copyright issues, we cannot copy the whole issue, but um, it's a great way to just stay apprised of new um, articles in your favorite publications. Also, we include popular magazines such as National Geographic, so it's a great way to save, um, save a bit of money on uh, subscriptions. I already went over article delivery. If you run into a citation through a database rather than the full text of an article, you can get it through this form. It's also included in the, uh, within the portal. And I'd also like to briefly plug our Flint Share It system. Again, if there is a book uh, on an environmental science topic that we don't have for some reason, um, we collaborate with a network of libraries across the state. Um, so you can place a request with your state library card number and pen through this platform linked here, um, and we'll work to get it delivered directly to you no matter where you are in Florida. Okay, do we have any questions? Any questions for me or Adam? If not, uh, that concludes our brief uh, overview of the sources, resources available to you through the State Library and State Archives of Florida. I was gonna say, you mentioned copyright, but uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention that the materials from the State Archives, the photographs and everything, are copyright free, so if you are using those for a paper or a book or a documentary or what, what have you, the only thing that we ask is you credit us so there are no licensing fees or anything like that. You can use that material for whatever you need, uh, even without asking us about it. We we'll just ask that you credit the state archives so that everyone knows where it came from. If they wanted to use the same materials or wanted to know where those resources are. So. Alrighty, any other questions? 